Good morning. It's very early morning. The sun isn't even up yet. And I am driving over to my buddy's house here because we're gonna go do some, some training today. We're gonna go out on the patrol and just, you know, practice the basics of patrolling together, which is important. You should do that. And this morning, um, we actually have a couple of our other friends who are coming out for the first time because they've finally understood that, you know, hey, it's probably a good idea to know how to do that. So we're going out this morning with some new people and uh, the sun will probably be just coming up as we're, as we're getting out, so that'll be nice. And I was thinking about this on the way out and I was thinking, well, what do you, what do, you do with new people? Um, you know, I've been teaching guns for, I don't know, since 2014, whatever that is, eight years. And uh, I'm no no stranger to teaching new people. And so, you know, kind of what are the big guidelines that you should think about when you are helping people who are brand new, right? And you might have your own different preferences or SOPs or whatever. You know, you're always gonna have your own flavor and that's, that's totally fine. Uh, but I think there are a few big, big building blocks that we can all just kind of work together, right? And the first one, of course, is uh, the safety rules, <laughs> okay? Um, all four safety rules. Those are important, right? We should cover those together um, so that uh, everyone in general stays safe, right? Now, especially when you talk about patrolling, right? It, it's similar to um, if you've ever been you know, hunting for like pheasants or whatever, any kind of stalking, hunting, right? Um, you're moving around with a gun. And when you're moving around with a gun, you gotta make sure that you're, you're paying attention to where that thing is pointed, right? And finding a way to drive that home and talk about that and explain that, like, hey, we're, we're moving together, uh, you know, and sometimes we'll be closer together, sometimes we'll be farther apart, but we obviously don't wanna point guns at each other at any point. So working through that, maybe you have some practical dry exercise that you can do, or you can set everybody out in like a wedge formation, right? Just like, you know, two or three feet apart just to get the concept down and then talk about, you know, moving and where your gun's going to be pointed and that kind of thing. You don't have to belabor it. Most people are adults. They understand the point, but again, just being able to explain those four rules in a way that your audience uh, understands what you're saying, right? <laughs> it's a key point to teaching. If they don't understand what you're saying, you're not teaching, okay? It's something I've learned <laughs> in my time. Um, so, one, safety rules. Uh, two, I think trying to give them a vision of the overall concept, right? And so talking about patrolling specifically here, uh, I think with patrolling, it's something like, you know, hey, moving from point A to point B when there's someone out there who might want to do us harm. Right, I, I think it's it's that simple. We're just moving from point A to point B with under the impression of there's someone out here who would potentially want to do us harm. And what does that look like? How do you do that safely and sneakily and quietly? And how do you communicate during that? And what if you know someone's shoelace gets untied? How do we how do we stop this whole thing so someone can tie their shoelace? Like, you know, little things like that, right? When you go out on patrol, I'm, I'm sure you know this already, but practical things like a shoelace being untied or getting a cut on your finger become a little bit bigger of a deal, right? Because you shouldn't just blow off that cut on your finger because if you're going to be patrolling for the next three days and you do that, you say, oh, it'll be fine. I'll do it, deal with it later. And it gets infected. Well, not now that's a big problem, right? So you want to take care of the small little practical things as you go about. And I'm sure you have SOPs that deal with that, but all that to say, you know, helping give people a vision for how we're going to address those things as a team. And then I think the third thing, which this leads into my third thing, is, hey, this is a team activity, right? This is a, this is a team sport. Uh, you know, this is not about what your preferences are or what you want to do or whatever. This, this is a team sport. We have to function as a cohesive team unit here or this whole thing doesn't work. Um, you know, much like, uh, I don't follow football at all, but much like American football, I played it when I was in middle school, right? The team has to function together to drive the ball forward. Only one person can hold the ball at a time, but that's not really the point, is it? It's the team functioning to advance that ball or the team functioning to stop the ball from moving forward, right? So how are you conveying that this is a team activity? We all need to work together here. 
um, and how are we going to cohesively do that, right? I think if you kind of lay the foundation for those kind of big central building blocks, um, you're going to have people grasp the concept fairly readily. And then uh, from there, you know, the sky's the limit, right? You can, you can keep training together, you can keep working together, and hopefully everybody gets better and better and more cohesive. And maybe you've experienced this, maybe you haven't, but after you have worked with a crew of guys for a while, you know, um, consistently, and, and I, that varies from group to group and person to person, right? But I don't know, let's say a year. After you put in time consistently for a year, once a week, once a month, you know, a couple hours at a time, something like that, whatever, uh, and as you become better friends, which, which does make a difference, by the way, uh, your, you, everyone just flows better. It just, you understand how people think. You just intuitively understand what they're going to do. Uh, and, and when you do that, it just makes things flow better. It's like a, it's like a good bro marriage or something like that. I don't know. It's still early. Okay. I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you some good building block, uh, kind of big pieces of like, well, what do we, how do we build the team? How are we trying to understand this? How are we trying to make this work together? And like I said, if you can get those three, I think there were three key building blocks in there. I think that's going to go a long, a long way, excuse me, a long way to laying a foundation so that your team can then of course build upon that, build your castle, build your, build your citadel. Uh, good morning. Have a wonderful day. Do brave deeds and endure.